Hey all, Dan Wiggins here again with Periodic Audio. Uh, we're talking a little more, more about the test equipment we use. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you a little bit more about the AP, about how it measures uh, some electronic stuff, and then we're going to talk about this middle box and why we have this middle box. That's an important one. So first off, I want to show some of the other uh, things we measure. Again, this is frequency response showing. Um, this is for our silicon. And so what we've got set here is it runs from 80 kilohertz on the high end down to two hertz on the low end. So very, very wide. Remember, most people consider audio bandwidth to be about 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz. In this case, we're going two hertz to 80 kilohertz. Uh, it's logarithmic, 101 points, um, full output level. And this is what we see for, you know, our, our silicon, basically. It's just ruler flat all the way up to about, you know, what is that, about 40 kilohertz. and goes, boop, just comes on down. So completely flat, that's kind of a cool thing. And at the full level, this is kind of, again, what you get. This is THD plus noise, it's not just THD. You see, it's very, very low. It's very, very flat over the whole thing. This is 5 hertz where it starts to rise up at the bottom end, and it only starts to rise up at about 30K. It starts to go up. Very, very low distortion overall. So that's kind of some of the cool things you can measure with this, uh, with the AP, uh, things like that. Now, all that said, let's get into the middle box, the AUX 0040. Okay, so what this does is essentially I've got, you know, like just on this guy, I've got analog outputs and analog inputs. So I put whatever I want to test in between these two, right, kind of a thing. Uh, I've got both balanced as well as uh, uh, unbalanced. And we got some digital interface stuff like that, too. This also has analog input and you could do, you know, higher level kind of things like from out of an amplifier, for instance, um, uh, digital amplifier, or you can take XLR in and you get your analog output. So I take the output from like a class D amplifier. People are familiar with class D amplifiers. Maybe maybe I should actually cover class D amplifiers next um, about uh, why they matter and what they do. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Let me put that on the list. Um, I mean, class D amplifier is basically a switching amplifier. You got this signal that goes back and forth really high rates and how fast it goes, how long it stays on and off, uh, determines how it performs. This little thing here, essentially, I take the output. Well, there's this high frequency ripple oftentimes that I don't want to necessarily have in my measurements. This guy filters it out. He takes that stuff out big time. I think it's like 100 dB of attenuation on above 40 kilohertz. That's, that's the 40 in it. They sell a 25 as well, which is above 25. But I like, I like the wider band with this thing. Um, so that means 100 dB. What is 100 dB mean? Well, for every 20 dB, it's a factor of 10. We're talking voltage. So it's basically 10 is 20 times 10 is 40 times 10 is 60 times 10 is 80 times 10 is 100. So that's 10,000 times. So basically it's going to attenuate the, the high frequency carrier ripple by 10,000 times. So essentially what you're going to see out of the output, only 0.01% of the output is actually going to be the carrier ripple well above 40 kilo, uh, you know, uh, still inside the bandwidth, the audio bandwidth, what we're limited with 40 kilohertz. That's what we have it. So we'll hook the output of a switching amplifier in here and there, and then it'll go out. And of course we have to have two channels because it's a stereo system. That's what that does. So that's what this filter is for. It's only used for electronics measurement. Uh, we use it for power supplies as well. We want to see noise levels on power supplies. Um, so we'll look at, you know, uh, like in the silicon, for instance, we measured the power supply noise and it's like around the order of like seven and a half RMS, microvolts RMS, which is really, really small uh, kind of a thing. Uh, some new class D amplifiers I'm doing for a car audio uh, company. It's a, um, we, we use this, of course, to remove the high frequency carrier, which is running up at about uh, 550, 600 kilohertz, it's full range kind of thing. So this removes a lot of that kind of switching uh, noise from you that you would, would uh, that would corrupt your measurement, but doesn't matter actually for the speaker or for what you would hear. So that's what this thing's used for. So uh, this is the lowest per price part of the, of the rack, um, but it's very important when you're doing electronics measurements. So that's what this guy lives for. And of course, we maintain a common ground with everything here. They're all tied together so that we don't get any ground loop noise when we're doing any connections in between. So there you go. That's the AUX 0040. Next, we'll talk about the transducer interface, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about amplifiers in the future. So there you go all. Peace out. Dan Wiggins, Periodic Audio. Check us out, periodicaudio.com. Um, we've got some cool sales going on, by the way, this month, too. So uh, if you want, like, a free little Bluetooth dongle uh, adapter, um, use code PRESIDENTS uh, for this month, and uh, you'll get a free um, uh, uh, neon Bluetooth adapter anytime you buy a beryllium or carbon IEM. So anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye.